uh, I started off working on the land, a land that wasn't mine. I worked for other farmers, picking uh, just about any, any uh, fruit and vegetable that grows here in the valley. Uh, you name it, if they grow it here, we picked it, uh, including grapes. Jose Hernandez spent his entire childhood working alongside his parents in these California fields, picking strawberries, cherries, onions, and cucumbers. Cucumber grows low, so you're always on your back picking and your bucket, filling your bucket, and then you gotta go and empty it and get your little chip that you then turn in for payment. And uh, it's hard work, but you know, by about 11 o'clock in the morning, you're done. And, you know, if you did very well, you could make 50, 60 bucks. But this is his land now. And it represents, to me, it represents life. Every year, his family would travel from Mexico to California, spending months at a time doing hard labor. It's the only life we knew, and to me, uh, it was normal. It wasn't, it wasn't a tough life. That's why I think my uh, work ethic came from. Still learning English, Jose excelled in math and science, and by 10 years old, he knew that he wanted to be an astronaut. After watching the last Apollo mission on TV, it was 1972, and he told his dad about his dream. I think what he saw was the determination of a 10-year-old boy, uh, that he did two things that changed the course of, of my life, I think. First thing is he validated the dream. He empowered me to believe I can do it. He said, because the first thing that he said is, I think you can do it. I mean, that is powerful from mm -hmm. a parent to a 10 year old. When he empowered me, I believed him. I worked very hard so, to, so I can have all my children to be somebody and it looks like uh, they, everyone has been professional now. <laughs> all four of them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm really, really, really proud of the whole, all of them. The youngest of four kids, he graduated high school in 1980, then earning a degree in electrical engineering from the University of the Pacific. Two years later, completing his master's degree, he began working at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, where he was instrumental in the invention of the mobile mammogram machine. During his time there, he began applying to NASA, a process that would take him 12 years. He was rejected 11 times. And so I reached this final 100, not once, not twice, but three times. And, you had uh, made it that far three, three times. Three times I was in the final 100, oh. so you could almost taste it. In a sea of more than 12,000 candidates, he was finally selected in 2004. So don't be so quick to give up on your dreams if you failed once or twice. Sure, failure doesn't feel good. Sure, rejection doesn't feel good. But if you prepare yourself, you come back stronger, and eventually you'll get there. Two years later, he got his wings, and in 2009, he was the flight engineer on the STS Mission on Spatial Discoveries, flying a 14-day mission to the International Space Station. He became the first, first-generation Mexican-American astronaut, and he also sent the first tweet from space in Spanish. I tweeted uh, for all the countries, especially the U.S., Mexico, and uh, the Latin American countries, good luck in the upcoming uh, qualifying rounds for the World Cup and see you at the World Cup. At the end of his 14-day mission, weather changed their flight path, forcing them to land in California instead of Florida. On the landing site of uh, Edwards Air Force Base, I always call it poetic justice. Uh, why? Because uh, it's about 80 miles from where I used to pick strawberries in the Ontario Chino area. Main gear touchdown. Were there people on your way up that doubted you because of your background? I guess the answer, the short answer is yes. Uh, you perceived that. It wasn't very blatant, uh, but you perceived it. But I also uh, think it also had to do a lot with having an imposter syndrome. Sometimes uh, you can't help and you say, hey, do I really belong here? <laughs> A husband and father of five, Jose left NASA in 2011, moving back to Stockton, running his consulting business, investing his time in the community, and buying his own land. Tending to the vines near where his entire family worked for years. Uh, we were out here because we had to be here. You know, it was a matter of survival. 
Now we're here because we enjoy it. Bottling the first vintage of Tierra Luna wines in March. It has a double meaning. Uh, Tierra Luna, my wife thought of the name for her restaurant because it meant Earth Moon Grill. Uh, but it also has a double meaning because Tierra in Spanish not only means Earth, it also means dirt. And while his life remains on this planet for now, he's again inspired by the latest mission to Mars. Do you feel like, uh, I mean, I knew it was the hardest decision of your life, but, but ultimately the right one for you to leave. But when you watch stuff like this, you, you miss it a little bit? Oh yeah, I miss it a lot. I miss it a lot. And uh, you know, I, I understand, you know, once you leave NASA as an astronaut, uh, you're never gonna go back. I understand that part, but you never know. I mean, you got SpaceX, you got Virgin Galactic, you got Blue Origin. All these companies have their own vehicles and may want to have experienced astronauts uh, lead uh, some of the missions, whether they're for tourism or for other efforts that they're trying to do. And so, you know. So you're the, leaving the door open. Yeah, exactly, the phone may ring one. Yeah, I'm still kind of, <laughs> I'm still in pretty good shape. So uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm hoping, you know, one day the phone rings and says, hey Jose, you know, have we got an opportunity for you? I'll say, hey, I'm, put me in coach, I'm in. <laughs> Now, his inspiring life story is being made into a movie. Netflix plans on shooting uh, early summer or spring. Diane. Love that, Kena. And Kena, when you were talking to him, meeting him, hanging out with him in person, what did you feel stood out to you the most when you heard his story from him? You know, Diane, it's the story of his second grade teacher, honestly. She changed the course of his life dramatically because when he was in second grade, his parents told him, you know, go get your three months of homework. We're hitting the road for work again. And his second grade teacher came to their home and said that education needs to be a priority. You need to consider the future for your children. And right then and there, everything changed. And they stayed in Stockton and look at what happened. And of course, his kids are going on to be successes as well. Diane, he has one child uh, getting his PhD right now. So it's just an incredibly inspiring story all around and for all generations. It really is. And, and it was interesting to hear him say that he suffered from imposter syndrome, always questioning, do I really belong yeah. here? Uh, you know, what do you, what do you take away from that when you think about all the doubt that he had and yet what he ended up accomplishing? You know, Diane, that struck me too, and my producer, Lisette, as well. Uh, we were both struck by the fact that he felt this imposter syndrome despite the fact that he had all of these degrees and he had all these successes in his life. He still sometimes questioned because he hadn't really seen anybody else do it before. Do I really belong here? And I think that that's something that we see a lot of times, Diane, in these trailblazers, people that are doing something for the very first time. And obviously the answer is that yes, you absolutely belong here, and we are a better country for it. Well, he made that clear. Kana Whitworth, thanks for that story. That was great. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.